Revelation 1.7, Behold, he comes with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Yes, amen. It is a very powerful verse, very revealing, and it also has several levels of interpretation, and so to speak, several fulfillments within it, mainly two, one spiritual and one literal. So first, the spiritual will be given when he comes as a thief in the night, as one of the two witnesses, and then it will be given literally when he comes in the clouds to gather the 144,000 in the harvest of the seventh trumpet. This is also why I mentioned a third time. When the war comes, Armageddon, with the heavenly army to fight against the nations that rise up against him with the abominable desolation. Now I will explain why I say this. Behold, he comes with the clouds in Hebrew in the scripture itself, which reveals to us the interpretation of each of the prophecies of each of the symbols. The clouds are connected, for example, obviously with the fact that they bring water, water is blessing, revelation. Also regarding the flood, it was a punishment. Clearly the flood of Noah, the coming of the son of man would be like the days of Noah, when Noah did what he did by building the ark and passing into the other world in the sense of going through the flood, enduring it, coming out of the ark, and multiplying. Yahweh made a covenant with Noah, with the world itself through Noah, creating the rainbow, the bow of Yahweh that would appear in the clouds. Then behold, he comes with the clouds, with the clouds comes revelation, blessing water, and also punishment for the wicked. The rainbow comes and separates the light. The light is Yahushua, the Messiah. Yahushua is wisdom, the first pillar. The last is the second pillar, like Jachin and Boaz, the two pillars at the entrance of the temple. The last is Boaz. And just as Yahushua is the light and his wisdom, the latter is understanding, like the rainbow that separates light into colors, and that is what helps to understand wisdom. Separating the idea, or that revelation that comes like a flash of wisdom, the light, and then having the power to separate it in order to also obtain contrast and more. In addition to that, the cloud also represents sin in scripture. When sin is covering like a cloud in a positive sense, continuing with that, the cloud represents the compassion of Yahweh. When a cloud of smoke appeared in the temple, the column of cloud that guided them during the day for 40 years was a representation of Yahushua, the pillar. And here, the pillar of fire at night represents the last witness with Moshe, who comes as the cloud of the night. So that is why I say, behold, he comes with the clouds. I repeat, it is connected regarding the coming of the last witness with Moses, because he comes like a thief in the night, thus he is like covered by a cloud. Even though they see him, they will not recognize him. And the fact that he comes as the prodigal son, as when scripture speaks of the clouds as sin, that he will again remove sin like a cloud, I repeat, because the last one comes as the prodigal son, in Luke, the story of the prodigal son, so here he comes with the clouds, I repeat, regarding the last one who comes as a thief in the night. Although they see him, they will not recognize him because he is covered. In addition, here he comes as the prodigal son, as the cloud in the negative sense of sin, which comes as the esteem of Yahweh, because Yahushua is the way, the ultimate is the esteem. As I said, the cloud also represents the esteem of Yahweh. It brings revelation, brings blessing like water, and brings plagues, as in the time of Noah. It comes with a rainbow, as Revelation 6 says, because it is like the rainbow that provides the separation of light, that is, understanding. As for the literal aspect, it is obvious that he will be seen coming in the sky, but on one hand, the chosen ones will see him during the harvest harvest, and mainly in the war of Armageddon, when he fights against the nations. That is when the whole world will see him. It says here that he comes with the clouds. I already explained that regarding the first and the last. Then it says, every eye will see him. Concerning the last, every eye will see him. When the scripture speaks of the whole world, it refers to the civilized world. The society that is connected in one way or another, in the past, there wasn't as much connection because there wasn't the technology that exists today, although it is said that in some times in history, there were a couple of instances similar to today's technology, like what is mentioned about Tartary, for example, even better. But the fact that today there is technology, like the internet, where everyone can see the same thing in an instant, and how everyone knows what goes viral, in just moments everyone is watching it, social networks and all that, will mean that regarding the witness Komoshe, every eye will see it, and those who pierced him, it says in the sense of the witness Komoshe, that would indicate that in the end, times those who pierced the Mashiach would reincarnate, and would again make the mistake of rejection him, or some would be given the opportunity to clearly repent and accept the option of some witnesses. For example, in the sense of Yahushua, once he comes in that final way, as I said literally, literally everyone will see him. Every human being who came into the world in human history will be resurrected and will see him on the throne judging, and those who pierced him will also be there in judgment to be judged. But this is at the end of the millennium. So in the spiritual sense, this entire verse is fulfilled within the last three and a half years, but in the literal sense, it will be fulfilled over the course of 1,000 years that is one part at the end of the seven years of the end times and the other part at the end of the millennium and all the lineages of the earth will mourn because of him. When the two witnesses are killed, the 144,000 who will be scattered across the four corners of the earth among the nations with different languages and so on, as well as people who will believe but are not necessarily of Israel in the flesh, will mourn when they see what is going to be done to the two witnesses. The whole world in general, which does not have Adam Ashiach, will rejoice. That is another matter. But on the other hand, it can be seen that the two witnesses, the witness as she in this case, due to the plagues that he will bring because he comes like the days of Noah and everything else, will cause all the lineages of the earth to mourn for him, for what he will do, in addition to the 
fact that they will kill him. Regarding Yahushua, literally, when they see him on the throne and realize that they rejected him and understand what they did to him at that moment, in fact, by the time of the throne, the first and the last will be one. Then, the people who killed him in the first coming and those who will kill him at this end of times will be involved, then everyone will see him and will mourn, some for having rejected him, others for not having recognized him, and others for the love they have for Yahushua and having witnessed what happened, etc. 